Hey everybody, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video 7 in our Scanda 3D design series. As I mentioned in the last one, we're going to carry on with the rest of the modifications in order to get our final surface here. So if you understand or you feel like you understand what we're doing, trimming surfaces, adding these blends, and working with these surfaces individually, then you can skip this video and move on to part 8 where we actually get into a little bit of the design work and, and start planning out our part. But if you want to focus on the rest of this and how to get this file in shape, then stick around for this video and we'll try to finish off all the rest of this guided surface and take a look at the differences. So. Now we need to trim some of these surfaces up and take a look at the rest of the work that we're doing. So right now we have two surfaces that we're not using. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of those, right click and delete those. As I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of cleaning up the feature tree. I like to knit things together when I can. In some cases it turns out to be more hassle than it's worth, but in a lot of cases it's a good idea to combine these so you make sure that you're removing the material where you need it. I'm going to go ahead and show my 3D sketch and let's look at this from the top plane. So we want to go normal to the top plane. I'm going to flip this thing around. Now from the top plane it looks like we can trim the rest of this information. So on the top plane I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch. So it was really important that we use the front plane to trim that back edge based on the direction we were looking. But now I can actually take this 3D sketch and I can just use convert entities and bring it all into my part. So if we zoom in you can see that we're not going to be really removing much information back here but if you feel like you don't want to remove that information we can always come in here and we can add a line at some point for instance right here and we can make that line tangent to the segment. We can use our trim tools and remove some information so now we can create this tangency here we can do the same thing on the other side as well. So we can come in at a point where we feel is far back enough. So for instance, maybe this point, we can come in, use our trim tool and remove that information then add our tangency in. So we want to make sure that we don't leave any dangling entities that we got all, we got rid of all the information that we didn't need. And then we can use this sketch now to trim the rest of our information. So we want to make sure we hide our 3D sketch and then we want to select in this case, sketch four we're going to use it as a trim tool. So I want to remove the rest of my green surface here, the rest of the surrounding surfaces down here, which include these yellow surfaces. Even though we're not going to use them, I want to make sure that we remove the material that we don't need. All right, so you can see now that we've removed the side material. Let's go ahead and hop back in here, make sure that we remove the sides of the green as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at this from the top again. Make sure that we are able to remove everything. We'll do a new trim operation. Remove both sides. All right. Well, for whatever reason, it's not allowing us to trim the green section, which is okay because we actually need to trim it from the front plane as well to remove some of this information. So you'll notice that we have this gray segment here and the yellow segment. Now the yellow segment is where the blend is going to happen between the green and what was the gray surface. So what I want to do now is create a sketch on my front plane. I'm going to look at this from the front and you can kind of get an idea of where that line is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to drag this around and see how that lines up with the yellow segment here. So obviously there is some of that overlap, some of that marbling there, but I think that line is a pretty good representation. Let's go ahead and show our 3D sketch. And in this case, let's see if we can use a straight line to represent the rest of this information. So I think we are accurately able to use a straight line because we don't really need all this information that's close to this edge. It'll be close enough for what we need. All right, so then I'm gonna use my trim tool and I'm going to get rid of all this information we don't need. And now I can use this to trim my green surface. So I'm going to remove all the extraneous material around the outside. And it looks like it's having some issue because there are some overlaps. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I hide all the surfaces I don't need. I hide my 3D sketch. And that way I only have a single sketch entity and a single surface that I'm trying to trim. So instead of a trim surface, for whatever reason this isn't working, we're going to go ahead and go to our curves menu 
and create a split line and project it onto that face. Then use our delete face option and remove it. So every once in a while this happens and for whatever reason, maybe it's some interchange between the surfaces or something, it doesn't allow that delete operation to happen when we're using the trim surface. So using the split line and delete face, it's kind of a cheat a way around. Let's go ahead and move forward with it. All right, so now we see that we have the upper segment of our surface, then we have this yellow interchange where we still need to do some trim work on this part, and then we have again the yellow interchange and some trim work on this lower section here. Now, just to make sure that my view is easy enough, I'm gonna go ahead and use this yellow segment. I'm gonna remove some of that purple. So that way it gives me a little bit better idea, a little bit better view. Then I want to go ahead and again, let's take a look at this from the front plane, start a new sketch and figure out where we can trim things. So we've already trimmed this where we need to for the yellow, but we also need to trim this gray. So what I want to do is show my split line sketch and I'm going to do an offset of this edge. So I'm going to do an offset entity or the other option is to simply draw a new straight line and just make sure that it has a parallel relation with that edge. That way you can manually drag it around and make sure that it falls into roughly the area that you need to trim your new surface. So now we can use trim surface and we can remove the upper section of that gray surface and we can hide the yellow surface. So this means that we should have a fairly consistent width between these two. Now it is slightly off because we're looking at these in different views. Now if you need to be completely accurate, you probably need to use in this case the top view and trim it in that respect. And that's certainly something we can do as well. So you can see if we remove this and again, we show that yellow surface, we can come in here on the top plane and we can draw a line that is an offset of that. So we can take convert entities and we can take this edge and create an offset. In this case, let's try one inch. Two inch gets us pretty close. And then just make sure that it overlaps the edge of the surfaces you wanna trim. So we wanna hide the yellow surface, grab this sketch, and we wanna remove the material from the gray surface. So in this case, that sketch from the top side, unfortunately was not used. So now if we look at this, we have the appropriate surfaces to create a boundary surface between these two. So I'm gonna start a boundary surface, go from one edge to the next, and we wanna zoom in and in this case, I'm going to add equal curvature to both sections. Now, when I do that, we want to make sure that we don't add bad geometry here. So for these edges, I want to make sure that I'm not adding too much influence. I'm going to do 0.5 for both of these and say, OK. So now if we need to, we can knit these together. We can knit all three segments together and then work on the bottom edge. So again, we have some overlap here. We have some area you can see where things are supposed to be trimmed and we can just work one at a time. So again, on the top plane, I'm gonna be working with trimming this gray section where the yellow overlaps. So again, I'm gonna use a straight line and if it's trying to snap to horizontal, I'm just gonna hold the control key down and make sure that I get as close as I can to that intersection. I'm going to use my trim tool and remove it from the gray. So you can see again we're getting that same error. It's saying please select a surface to be trimmed. So if you're getting that, again you can use curves and you can split the surface. And I'm thinking it's causing a problem because there is such a close interaction between the two surfaces. But that way we can use the split surface and just simply delete that face. And now we want to make sure that we have that same type of interaction between the purple and the yellow. So again, on the top plane in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that edge where I split it. So I'm going to find my yellow surface. And in this case, I'm going to hide it. I'm going to take this edge, use convert entities, and then I'm going to offset it. So turn my yellow surface back on, take this edge and do an offset entity. So you can see that the same two inch dimension gets us pretty close to where we need to be. Now in this case, we need to make sure that the end definitely does overlap. So I wanna hide my yellow surface, or in this case, because I'm done with both of these, I can simply delete them 
make sure that there's no confusion. Use my sketch and let's try to do a trim surface again. All right, so you can see it's not quite removing as much material as we want. So what I'm going to do is modify the parameters. I'm going to go back in and instead of two inches, I'm just going to do two and a quarter. So I want to make sure that I remove an appropriate amount of material. So you can see there, we definitely don't want an issue where we're removing small chunks of segments because that small segment there that wasn't going to be deleted, that's going to produce an issue when we go to create this patch. So again, boundary surface between these two edges, again, equal curvature relation, and take a look at the curvature we have. So if we sort of zoom into these, in this case, it looks like using one for the dimension, and then we can knit everything together. And now we have one single surface. So in this case, you can see we have a couple different colors here, but I can remove all appearances from the part, and then I can manually modify the appearance of the entire part, so that way we can get a little bit better idea of what we're looking at. In this case, let's give this one green, and let's turn on our real view graphics and rotate this thing around. So you can see there's some issues over here in the corner where things were, were jutting out. But overall, we have some really nice surfaces. Everything's nice and smooth. And we can go ahead and save this part. Now, at this point, what I want to show you is the deviation analysis. Now, we've done this for that small segment when we were patching the middle here. But what I want to do is right-click on my mesh and show it. And we want to go ahead and use this deviation analysis and look at the differences between the overall surface that's knitted together, this surface knit four, and the original mesh file. And this is a very good kind of last check here to make sure that at least in the areas where you need the surface, so if you need to interact with the surface in a certain area, such as for us, if we want to interact with this corner, or if we want to interact with this pocket in a certain area, we have at least a good tight tolerance, a good tight area where we don't have a lot of deviation between the two. So as this thing's cranking away, you can just get the color bar to look at the differences. So you'll notice that there's max deviation in a few areas over here close to the side, which is okay because we don't really need to worry too much about that area. And you can see that that number is actually 0.21. And we can limit this. We can give an upper bound and a lower bound. But you'll notice that we're fairly close. I mean, there is some area. The blue is, is really what we want to hit. But we're fairly close in the areas that we want. So if we want to go across this pocket in this area, you can see that we're fairly close there. Now, the important thing here is, let's go back to the automatic. So if you remember, the deviation was roughly 0.21 for the maximum amount for that guided section. So let's go ahead and show the mesh in this file. Let's go ahead and do our deviation analysis here. So we want to look at the entire surface. And again, we're going to calculate that. Now you'll find on the whole, typically the automatic creation is going to be a little bit tighter overall over the entirety of the mesh. Now that's because it's using the mesh to create its surfaces. But what you will find is that even though you have a tighter tolerance overall, there are going to be instances where having this patchwork, especially in certain areas, having this patchwork is going to produce problems. So you can see for us that the tolerance is really tight. The maximum is 0.16, and that's really only in this one area here. Everything else is actually 04, 05, these yellow segments, and then the blue segments are going to be basically the negative of that, negative 0.05, and then these green segments are pretty close, 02, 03. Overall, this part looks really good. Uh, it holds a pretty tight tolerance, but you can see that it's fairly wavy. Uh, it's going up and down everywhere. So if we look at this, we hide our mesh, and you look at this in the real view graphics, then you can start to see a bunch of those little bumps and, and bridges there. If we go back to a finished version of it, you can see that everything's fairly smooth. And if we do an evaluate, the curvature is fairly consistent in these areas. It's consistent across these edges. And that's really what you want to see. Whereas the automatic one, if we look at the curvature, it tends to be bumpy in these areas. You can see that there's a lot of deviation. It's a little bit wider in these areas. So again, it's a different process. It definitely takes a lot of work. It's not automatic to do it this way, but you can potentially get a tighter surface in the areas where you're concerned with. 
So again, the guided creation, you can see that it's a little bit tighter tolerances. The curvature is more consistent over these broad areas. And if that's where you need to hit your geometry, then the guided creation is going to be a very good option for you. If you simply need a surface that's as close to your scan as possible, then by all means, use that automatic tweak some of the settings, change some of your tolerances so you're not trying to hit all of those peaks and valleys in the curves. But overall, that is the process of how to use scan to 3D, taking a look at the mesh preparation, creating curves, creating surfaces, and then eventually doing a deviation analysis and seeing how close all of your geometry falls. So if you guys have any questions, please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.